bit about corporate governance uh, of the company. As I understand, uh, about, about five to six months after the IPO, they injected uh, some of their own company assets into into Disco. Can you talk a bit about that? Um, and the second question is, why do you think a P multiple of 38 times can be sustainable? If you think it's ag against the region, it's cheap, the region might be overpriced. Can you talk about that? Thank you. Excuse me, what specifically about corporate governance are you asking? Yes, I think six months after the IPO, they injected a um, company from the family. If um, you're not aware of that, then never mind. But that's what I'm... I'm um, probably you, you're talking about um, uh, a company, uh, SNR. So this is a re recent acquisition of Pure Gold. So as we mentioned, this is a... Um, Pure Gold's access to the AB income segment, allowing them to target all income segments. So, rel relation to corporate governance. Um, well, overall, Pure Gold has been doing much, uh, much better, especially since in terms of compliances with um, corporate gov governance guidelines set by the Philippine Stock Exchange. Um, by the end of 2011, Pure Gold has only set partial compliance, especially since it's transitioning from a family-owned company to a publicly listed company. However, by 2012, it was able to meet most of the non-compliances that it had in 2011. For example, um, setting up audit committees, um, management units to, to manage enterprise risk, and other systems that would help um, ensure the company's corporate governance. Yeah, can I just ask, can you give me a better understanding of the real estate strategy for the company? And then the second one, in terms of execution, uh, you say same, same store sales growth, do you have a chart depicting that and how much of its growth from acquisitions? So um, when we look at the, skill, the business model of the company, it actually employs a scalable business model. Uh, its asset light expansion strategy relies on property leasing, wherein 70% of the total properties of Pure Gold being leased. Also, it outsources distribution and human resources to third-party agents, and also by maintaining strong supplier relationship, they're able to um, receive logistical support removing the need for warehousing costs and distribution costs for the company. And also the synergy of the different multiple store formats allow them to enter to an area easily given the different se available selling area and also a strategy to prevent competitors. Meanwhile, the hypermarkets serve as the warehouses for the smaller store formats such as the, hype, the supermarkets and the discounters, thus minimizing the need for minimizing the company's warehousing and distribution costs. So using this bus business model, the company is able to, to expand easily with minimal investment. Do you, you just mentioned property leasing, is that right? Yes. With a high dividend growth uh, payout ratio of 60% and in a growing market, something's not right. You know? The leases on those properties, are they on the subject of corporate governance, related party transactions? Um, talking about risks, particularly um, related party transactions, um, it cannot be denied that there are still related party transactions, particularly due to lease transactions. However, when we uh, analyze these related party transactions um, against uh, operate operation expenses, we could see that um, related party transactions as a percentage of operation expenses is already decreasing, including uh, within our um, time horizon of our investment. So um, this becomes less and less of a concern um, for pure gold. I just want to answer the question about PE multiples. Um, just to clarify, are you talking whether the sustainability of the Philippine equity market is sustainable? No, the PE multiple of the stock, whether it's justified at this level. Right. Is it too expensive, basically? Right. So let's take a look at the regional peers and their beta, I mean, and their PE multiples. Do you not think the regional peers are expensive on its own? Um, we think there's actually a lot of if you look at the, 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 at the growth of traditional retail, particularly how its penetration rate is just about to increase, we see that there's actually a lot of potential. Um, so you have most countries that are well below 30% in terms of penetration of tradi modern traditional retail. And so you have probably the highest would be in developed, considered developed markets, would already be places like Malaysia or China, where the retail penetration of modern retailers are already at around 70%. So when you look at how much modern grocery retail can still grow within the region. We think that these PE multiples are actually sustainable given that we expect rapid growth to come in the long term. Um, well, 
I have a question, question about uh, the, the expansion plan of the company. You have to uh, think that the company will double the uh, number of stores uh, uh, through uh, this expansion. Um, wha wha I understand why, why the payout ratio is that high and how the company can uh, finance this uh, expansion plan for the next few years ahead and, and how, how you think that it will, uh, can be executed. So are you asking about our position in terms of free cash flow to sustain both the dividend payouts and the expansion plan? Yeah. So we can go to our slides and valuation regarding free cash flow and how it's able to fund CapEx needs. And as we can see here, Pure Good actually has two main sources and how it funds its expansion plans. One is it has, um, it, it uses internal generated funds. And as we can see here, it actually has um, enough money to finance that. However, um, in case that they want to expand more than expected, we go to the next slide, which shows that Pure Gold actually can issue more debt if needed because they actually they have um, a 50-50 debt-to-equity ratio target, which is not yet met because as, as of now, it is still about 39% 30, uh, of debt to asset. So as we can see here, they can either use their internally generated, generated funds or issue more debt, which we think is suitable and enough to fund their CapEx needs and other acquisitions. Are you using the same interest rates as in your projections? Are you targeting a raise in interest rates, a rise in interest rates, or not in your projections? To answer that question, we, I'd like to look at the interest rates currently in the Philippine market. Actually, we are slowly, it is at the decreasing trend right now, and it is sustainable. Um, to go to the previous slide, we see that there are, uh, to the, there are two reasons why our interest rates are actually going lower, which we think will further help your gold if in case they want to issue more debt, it would actually, they could actually issue at lower rates because of one, pure gold has, um, uh, the Philippines currently has a stable um, inflation rate and it's actually quite decreasing which enables, the, which enables the Philippines to have lower interest rates. And on a second, on a second part, there is robust um, Philippine growth, particularly in the macroeconomic part. And yes, to answer your question simply, Yes, the interest rates, we expect a decrease in these interest rates and we incorporate that into our, into our valuation. What is the strategy of the company on the online sales and what, if any, percentage of the sales are coming through online? Right now, none of their sales are coming from online. And because if you look at, um, while this has been uh, a trend in Asia Pacific, we actually don't see this yet catching on in the Philippines. But additionally, what makes Pure Gold different is the targets actually low income segments. And right now, online retailing isn't something that a lot of these people with the income segment of the Philippines currently uses. So right now, there aren't any plans to pursue an online retail strategy. But you mentioned that uh, they, are, they are diversifying into different in income strata, right? So they are going to the top level also. And you don't see any strategy for the online sales at this point in time? spoken to management about it? Well, when we talk about SNR, right now, they're a little bit more conservative about the expansion of SNR. So you see them expanding by one store per year right now. And, but we believe that as, as, as the growth of the economy um, increases and a lot of more people join this EB income segment, these are things that they will explore in the future. But right now, when we've talked to them, their focus is actually making sure that they expand um, pure go their hypermarkets, supermarkets, which are targeting the lower income segments. Uh, I have a question about the competition landscape. You have the position of the company uh, in, in each of the segments and uh, in, in their uh, respective market share. Uh, so, okay, so let's look at the competitive profiles. So uh, Pure Gold, in, in terms of the comp local competition in the Philippines, a lot of the retailers are actually, uh, don't focus so much on grocery. Um, so first, when you talk about, there are four major retailers, Pure Gold Price Club, SM Retail, Robinson's Retail, and Rustans. SM Retail is a diversified company that is also present in banking and real estate, and the same with uh, Robinson's Retail and Rustans. However, if you go to the next slide, um, Pure Gold is actually the only one focused, really focused on grocery retail. The others are focused on non-grocery retail, like having a department store or having a, have an apparel store. So how does that figure in to their competitive positioning? We'll show the next slide, is that um, right now, um, when you talk about targeting the income segments, only pure gold that really has that reach to not only the CD income segments, but also by tapping into traditional retail stores, 
they tap into this market. Um, SM Retail, Robinson's Retail understands, don't have that positioning and don't have a reseller program. Um, but as you can see, Pure Gold's 